Welcome back, Shark Kings. Today is a big day. I just beat my hundredth game since getting a PS5, which means it's finally time for our channel to do a tier list video. All these games are available or were available on the PlayStation Plus Extra service. So if the extra catalog seems overwhelming to you and you don't know where to start, this video is the perfect place to begin. Here we are on Tier Maker. All you need to know is I've loaded all the games that I've played on Extra and Beat right here. And these are only the short games. I will add the longer games later. And also these are only the games that are still available on Extra. I beat a lot more games that have left Extra and we'll add that at the end. So we're gonna start off with what remains of Edith Finch. And we're gonna start off strong by going all the way to must play. That's right. This game is one of the strongest short games you can play. I think it's only like two hours. And after playing it once, you're gonna remember the story for a long time. It really sticks with you. It's basically like a walking sim, but it's very creative with its storytelling. Okay, Hot Shot Racing. I'm gonna put it probably D, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a really fun racer and it does what you expect from a racer, but there are better games to play on extra. Okay, Transference. This one is a game, it's very trippy, it's horror. This one's between C and D, but it's basically like a, a game meant for VR and it blends like uh, digital and also real live action. But it's horror and it's a puzzle and it's really trippy. And it's only two hours. Okay, Res Infinite. This game has a crazy rating for what you get. You look at the game and you're like, um, okay, what is this, Virtual Boy? The rating is almost like 90, like the Metacritic rating. It's very fun to play. Is it for everyone? Can I recommend it? I would definitely recommend it, but is it a must play? I'm gonna, play, I'm gonna say it's pretty good. I don't think it's as amazing as its rating because I think it's sitting at an 89 right now. Super short game and Worth a try. All right, often confused is Rezo Gun. Now this one is about a cylindrical uh, shoot 'em up, I believe they're called. You're just a spaceship shooting, going from side to side, avoiding um, a million particles. And if you like particle physics, then you're gonna love this because the same people made Returnal. I'm gonna put that a bit higher. I'm gonna say that's in the backlog, okay? And the bosses, just like Returnal, get pretty difficult. So all these games are like a one sitting game. These are all like two hour games. Okay, Giga Bash. This is a newer game that was added. It's about like kaijus and fighting monsters and stuff. And it's very like Japan anime themed. I'm gonna put it down here. I don't know if I'd recommend it or even playing it, <laughs> but it was really good. I had a good time with it. Gardens Between. Okay, this was one of the first games I reviewed. It's a puzzle game. I love puzzle games. So you're gonna see a theme here. So I'm gonna move it up all the way to pretty good. Play as the boy or the girl. One of them controls time, the other one controls like traversal. Only two hours, one of the easiest platinum you're gonna find in this entire list. You're gonna be able to get a PlayStation Platinum in, in two hours. Okay, Avicii, Invector. I've already talked about this game in the 50 short games compilation video. It's like Guitar Hero, but you're a spaceship. And also the controls are a little bit harder than Guitar Hero. It's not just button presses, it's like twists and turns. I'm gonna put it in pretty good. I don't think it's like a go out and try it right now. Okay, Super Liminal. This is, okay, this is this is the opposite, okay? I think this one only has a 79 or something. I'm gonna put this all the way up here. Is it, a, is it a must play? I'm gonna put must play at least for five minutes. Like just play the first five minutes, okay? The rest of the game, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth beating. It might be back here, but I'm gonna move that down later. But it's definitely a must play just to mess up with your head. Okay, unpacking. This is a weird game. You're basically opening up boxes and moving in your character and you decide where all the items go. It seems like a really boring game, but it's really addictive and it's over really fast. Oh man, is it as good as Resogun though? Mm, no, it's, it's pretty good. Okay, okay. <laughs> Calm down there. Tetris. Tetris effect. I know it's really hard to read, but this is Tetris. Now this has a really high rating. I think it's like in the 90s or something, maybe high 80s. I don't, it's Tetris. I don't think it's that good. It's pretty fun. I mean, it's Tetris. What do you expect? Sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with pretty good. Shredder's Revenge. Ooh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Okay, this one is getting an S for me because this one is a must play, not only because of nostalgia, because they actually got the original voice actors to redo everything, but it just feels like an, uh, like an arcade beat-em-up game that you played as a kid. I mean, if you were born 
before the 90s. I realize a lot of people are much younger and weren't around for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So this is going up there. It's a must play. It doesn't waste your time. I think the levels are only like eight minutes each, so you don't got much time to lose. Okay, Matterfall. It's from the same makers as Rezogun and also Returnal, but it's like a like a character that's just jumping around shooting things instead of a spaceship. Mm, I want to say it's not as good as Rezogun. We're going to put it here. Moving on, Erica. Okay, this is a weird game. I thought it had the most amazing graphics and I was blown away. And then I realized it's just a movie. <laughs> it's just a movie and you get to pick which direction the movie goes. There's no actual like CGI or special effects in this game. So we're gonna put it down here. I mean, it does have a really low rating. I think it only has like a 69 or something, but it was fun for me. I think it was only about like four hours. Infamous, First Light. Um, I played the original Infamouses, like Infamouses, Infamous, Infamous I, I don't know. The original Infamous, and that was pretty fun. So this was nice, like, nostalgia trip. I'm going to say it's not for everyone. It's not bad. It's a really good game for what it is, but it just feels really dated. So I'm going to put it right there. Pedestrian, another puzzle game. This one combines 2D and 3D and worth playing to the end. So I'm going to put that all the way to A. Is it a must play? I need you to play the end so you can experience what I experienced. But a fun puzzle game. Let's just leave it at that. Metal Hellsinger. Okay, this game's supposed to only take like four or five hours, but it took me three days because the final boss was insane. It's basically if Guitar Hero had a baby with Doom Eternal. I'm going to put that. It's really unique. I'm going to put it up here. You're going around shooting and slicing and everything, but you have to shoot and slice on the beat. Like you're not just looking at like, here, let's let's just press these buttons on time. You're playing a full game. And on top of that, there's an overlay that's kind of like Guitar Hero. So it's like two games in one. It's really unique. And once you get used to it, it just hits. And also surges in it. So... It gets points. Far Cry 3 Blood Dragon. Okay, this is a Far Cry game, but it's a very short Far Cry game. It's 80s and cyberpunk and dinosaurs. Like, it's crazy. It's like that one movie that came out with the guy with the skateboard and David Hasselhoff. What was that movie called? Leave it in the comments. Basically, similar vibes to that. Okay, Little Hope. Okay, this is literally the hundredth game that I played. This is the game that I played, and I was like, all right, we're at a hundred. These games are in between Erica and Edith Finch. <laughs> Literally the first and last game. Um, it's basically like a movie, but it's all CGI. It's not, it's not live action. And then you get to control which way they go. But also there's there's parts in the game where you actually control the character because you need to like get pickups and stuff like that. So we're going to put that here. Okay, because there's other games coming from the same genre that are a little bit better. So we're going to put Little Hope right here. Okay, Call of the Sea. This is not what I was expecting. I was expecting like a 2D like happy adventure game but it was a 3d puzzle game like walking sim the controls were a bit janky i would put it here but i think it's actually oh i almost want to put it in pretty good but it doesn't compare with those guys so we're gonna put it here because the story is really good i really like the story of it the gameplay not as great like it felt really slow like the character walked so slow other than that it was really good for what it was very short game too i think like under five hours far changing tides okay this one's definitely better than that one so we're gonna put it up here it's you and your ship going for a long journey it's kind of the same vibe as inside like those kind of games or it's just going from left to right but you're in a ship and then you're constantly repairing your ship and finding new upgrades trying to find out what the game is about because there's there's, there's zero dialogue and zero context of what you're trying to do. It's all just visuals. Okay, Hotline Miami. Just thinking about this game makes me want to play it. So I'm going to vote it a little bit higher. It's like an old school, like Nintendo style from above. Like those diehard games. Remember those diehard games for the Nintendo? Personal preference, but I do like those games. So we're going to put it up here. 1111 Memories Untold. Okay, this game's about the war, World War One. Different perspectives. You're from a Canadian and also a German. And it's, it's story is really good and starring Elijah Wood. Um, the gameplay is okay. I'm going to put it, I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to put it over here. I actually enjoyed it. And the art style is like impressionist style. So I want to say it's not for everyone, but I think we should play it. I think you should play it. Okay, moving on. <laughs> moving on. Moving out. This game is the prequel to 
unpacking. Not really, but <laughs> this one, you're, you're moving out. You're not moving in. So you're putting all the furniture and all the boxes into a truck. Not for everyone. No, no, no. I'm going to say it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Only because it has couch co-op. You can play with a friend and you could like grab both ends of the couch and move them and just throw them around and break glass. And it's getting a little increased because there was a level that was the Seinfeld apartment. Getting points for that one, for sure. Carto. Oh, Carto is pretty good. Do I recommend it? I'm going to say not for everyone. What makes the Carto unique is you rearrange parts of the map as you're playing. So in other games, you just open the map and the map is the map. But in this game, you can maneuver the map and by maneuvering it, you unlock new areas. So it was a really unique take on these kind of games. Forgotten City. Okay, this one's going right up top because this is one of my favorite games I played that I had no idea about anything coming into it. It used to be a Skyrim mod, I believe. It's a time loop game and it's a game that's based entirely on knowledge. So you figure stuff out, you start the day over again, and then use that new information to help you further the plot. But this game consulted with actual historians. So there's a lot of like deep dives when it comes to like philosophy and ancient civilization, which I highly recommend everyone dives into if that's your thing. Lonely Mountain Downhill. This one's interesting because I did the review of it in December and I think it went from like 62 to 72 or something. And now I believe it's almost at 80. Like it keeps increasing 10 points every time I, uh, <laughs> I review it. I enjoyed it. I liked it a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it pretty good. You're a bike. You're going downhill. You can decide to take the easy way, which is staying on the road, or take the fun way, which is jumping off and hoping your character doesn't crash. Valiant Hearts of the Great War. Another game similar to 1111. I'm going to put this under it, though. I don't think it was as good as 1111. Very similar. I did a video about these two games, so I'm not going to get into it. Okay, Deliver Us the Moon. This one everyone recommends. I just was not that excited about it. I played it, but there was too many other games that, that were very similar and also did a few things better. So I'm honestly going to put this at the bottom. I know a lot of people are like, the most recommended game, Deliver Us the Moon, but there's other space games and I just personally didn't find this one that great. Proteus, I just beat this one like this month. A lot of these games, a lot of these indie games are like, we're bringing back that vintage look, but the vintage look is NES and SNES right? But this one's aiming for like N64. I'm going to go all the way up here. You don't see that often. You don't see people aiming for the graphics to look like graphics did when the first 3D games came out. So I really like that about it. And the particle physics of it is very modern. So it's a weird mix of very fast Doom-like shooter, but N64 graphics, which is, I guess, what Doom was. Undertale. This game was a lot of fun to play. This is one of the only games I've streamed. I only streamed two games. I heard that you can beat it without hurting anyone, and I did, and I highly recommend doing the same. You can either be pacifist or try to hurt everybody, and you'll be rewarded at the end either way. That's all I'm going to say. Observer System Redux. Okay, this game is very slept on. It's a weird game. It's cyberpunk. It's the future. Basically, if you like Blade Runner, you will love this game because we got some of the same actors, and they even recreate a little scene from Blade Runner, one of the best scenes ever. So I'm going to put that all the way up here. I know other people don't recommend it. Even the ratings for it are not that good. But for me, it's going up there. Put in your backlog. Miles Morales, Spider-Man. Well, if you're getting a PlayStation, you are going to be playing Spider-Man. So we're putting that all the way at the top. Hmm. Okay, now that we have these up here, we're going to move Super Liminal down. <laughs> All right, there we go. That looks better. Yeah, these games are goated. The story is very short. It gets right to the point. And you have extra powers. I mean, all my friends who have Xbox, out of all these games, the one game they want to play on PlayStation is Spider-Man. That's the only thing they have FOMO for. Okay, Sniper Elite 5. This was an interesting one. I've never played any of these games, but I had fun with it. Do I recommend it? There's like a million shooters. I don't know if I would recommend it for other people, but I had a lot of fun with it. Until Dawn. Okay, this one is slightly better than little hope it has better acting and everything it stars the guy who plays freddie mercury and also the girl from heroes save the cheerleader save the world but i'm gonna put all these games probably down here it's known as the best one of the bunch but i personally don't like it as much ghost runner i'm gonna i'm gonna vote it yeah it's going way up there bit difficult for some people it's like a platformer and you're gonna die like 40 to 100 times per level because 
you can't get hit even once. But the movement, it's very Mirror's Edge style. Mirror's Edge with a sword. Like, what more do you want? Kenna looks like a very cute game. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring it down here. I'm gonna bring it down here. Put it in your backlog after you beat these games. Um, Kenna basically looks like a Pixar movie. It's all cutesy and stuff. And then you get to the bosses and then you realize this is as hard as a Souls like. It has such insane boss battles for a little cutesy game. It seems like a little girly game. You're like, oh, this is cute. I'm collecting little creatures. This is, uh, this is so adorable. And then the bosses come and then bam, it's a Souls like. The difficulty of this kid's game will humble you. Okay, and then we have, this is a bonus one, so let's just say 101. You get this when you get a PS5. It's just included on your system. I don't know if it's available on extra. It might be a, a bonus one, so I'm not gonna count it as part of the 100. But what we are doing is putting it at the very top. So Astro's Playroom is a must play. If you have a PS5, you must play this game. Do not download any other game when you first get a PS5. Literally just play this game to figure out what the PS5 can do and then play other games and be disappointed that none of those features are being implemented. <laughs> All right, well that concludes all the short games that are still on extra that I have played and beat. Next, we're gonna throw in the long games. 